Hello guys, today we're going to be replacing the front pads and rotors on my 01 Golf TDI. So we're going to go ahead and get started here. Uh, make sure you have the vehicle safely supported before you proceed. I left my jack right here and I put some 4x4s there under the uh, subframe area. Alright, so if we look at the back of the caliper right here, um, there's a cap that um, is it like a dust cover to prevent any debris going in there? There's actually a seven millimeter um, Allen screw in there. I don't know if you could see that. We're going to go ahead and remove both of those. Uh, this is what the cap looks like. I already took that off. It just comes right off. I use a little screwdriver to get behind it. I'll show you on the bottom here. Try to get in that little gap there and then it comes right out of there. Okay, so I'm gonna get my, this is all I have, guys. Um, you don't really need this long of an extension here. Um, somewhere right around this midpoint would be perfect, but this is all I have. And um, we're gonna go ahead and loosen this now. There we go, that's loose. Loosen the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and remove these. Okay, the caliper bolts are loose. Uh, what you might need to do is uh, push on this collar here, push the bolt back away from the carrier, like so, so it clears it. Same with the one underneath. As you can see, the, the threads are still in there, so what you need to do is get a screwdriver and slowly push this back out of the way. It gives you the clearance. So now, you can go ahead and grab your caliper and wiggle it back and forth, and the whole thing should pop right out of here. Let's get two hands on it. All right. Now the pads should pour it out of here. All right, so these pads are junk. Now the caliper, you should probably get something and uh, tie it up out of the way. You don't want to let it hang by this brake line. Uh, I'm just gonna set it on top of the rotor for the time being and I'm gonna go get some uh, string and tie it off. Okay, I have the caliper secured up and out of the way. I grabbed a bungee cord and just wrapped it around the top of the coil spring there and uh, around the inside of the caliper. You can see the line is, uh, there's no weight on the line. It's out of the way and clear. So we can go ahead and proceed on to the next step. And we're gonna go ahead and remove this rotor. This is a T30 torque screw in here. It's a good idea to have a couple spare because these tend to strip. So make sure you have a T30 style Torx bit and uh, we'll go ahead and hopefully get this thing out of here without any issue. There we go, it's free, thank God. You never know with the corrosion, especially where I live in western Pennsylvania, the winters are harsh on these vehicles, unfortunately, because of the salt they use on the roadways, which sucks. This screw actually looks to be in good shape. I might reuse it, but I do have new ones. Let's go ahead and take this rotor right off. That exposes the hub. 
I'm gonna go ahead and get a wire wheel on my drill and clean this area up before I mount the new rotor. Same with these areas here. I want these nice and clean. All right guys, I have my drill set up here with the wire wheel. So what I'm gonna do is go around all of the uh, surface area here on this hub, clean this up real good, as well as this area right here where the pads ride on. You want this to be nice and clean. You don't want the pads to hang up. You'll get uneven pad wear that way. Then, uh, so I'm gonna get started. Just make sure you have eye protection while doing this. Um, and be safe about it. Here we go. This area is nice and smooth. So you can see it looks a lot better. So just continue the same process the whole way around the hub and uh, these areas here. And uh, we can go ahead and um, mount that new rotor on then. All right guys, here are the rotors and pads I chose. Uh, these ones here are called uh, Freemax. And these are actually painted, which are nice to help prevent corrosion. And these are Ecobono pads. Here's your part number. Uh, these are made in the USA, which is nice. And you can see the pads here. Um, this one down below here does have the sensor. I'm just going to cut those wires off. I'm not going to use that. Um, you don't have to do that if you don't want to. You can choose to use these sensors, but um, they're just a pain. And they usually fail prematurely, so I don't like to use them. And there's the part number for the rotors. And this is a pretty unique uh, little packaging system here. You just lift this up and lift the cover off. And there we have our rotors. Pull these out of here. These do have a coating of oil on them. So I will have to um, make sure these are cleaned up before I install. I don't want that oil on the new pads. So first, before you install these, uh, get some um, brake clean spray and spray these up real good to get rid of that oily residue. Okay, let's take our new rotor and mount it on the hub. Make sure that again, the surface is clean. And same with this backside surface, make sure this is clean as well inside here. Make sure this is clean. You want it to um, seat on there nicely. Okay, so we'll take our rotor, make sure we have this little hole lined up with the threads on the hub, like so. And we'll take our little torque screw and uh, mount it in there. I'm gonna go ahead and reuse my torque screws in great shape. I'm gonna put a little anti-seize on these threads so the next time that I go to remove this, it'll be um, just as easy. Now this little rotor screw gets torqued to uh, roughly four newton meters, which isn't much at all. Alright guys, for the next step we need to lube these caliper pins. I already have one removed, this is what they look like. They just push through this side and come out the back. So if you apply some pressure and just push this pin out, it'll come out the back. And this is what you'll have. 
So we need to apply some lube to this because this is what moves in and out. And uh, this is what they gave me with the pads. This Molly brake lube. We'll get some of that and put a light coating on here and just reinstall. This is what you have. So just clean this surface up and then apply some lube. All right, so I have a nice coating of uh, that grease on this pin. So I'm going to go ahead and slide it back in. Let's push it back in and then work it back and forth. Make sure it slides freely, which both of them do. And that's it. Now we can compress this piston so we can install our new pads. All right, now we can go ahead and compress this piston back inside the caliper uh, before we put our new pads on. Make sure this surface is clean. I just cleaned it up real quickly with my Dremel. I'll show you what I used. I used this right here, this little um, grinding wheel on there, and it worked really good because I can get in there and uh, get in that tight spot. Okay, let's open up the brake fluid reservoir. Just set that cap right there, as long as it's loose. So we're going to be pushing fluid back through the system. All right, guys, this is how I'm going to compress this. I have these slip joint pliers or channel locks. Just going to go ahead and position them like this, and slowly squeeze in, and the piston will slowly squeeze back inside the caliper. That's all it takes. Now we can go ahead and get our new pads and put them in place. Okay, this pad here is the inside and this pad is the outside. You can see the differences in the clips. Uh, this one had the sensor on it, I cut it off. So this one just clips right inside the piston there. Like so. Here's a closer look. So here's your outside pad. So just position it up top like this and push down. Like so. It's easier with two hands when I'm trying to hold this camera. Alright, and your inside pad it just goes right inside the piston there. So now we can take this whole assembly and put it back into position. All right, there we go. You can see this bottom part here. Make sure that's over top of where the pad rides on. So kind of hinge it like so. So grab it like that, insert the bottom and then hinge up. And now your pin should align. We need to you know, move it up or down a little bit and then get those pins started. But, uh, yep, that's the way it looks. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and tighten these up. And remember, these get torqued to uh, 30 newton meters or about 22 foot pounds. And don't forget to install these caps. All right, guys, that completes the brake job. Um, don't forget to torque your lug bolts to 120 newton meters or about 89 foot pounds. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.